So my name is Aryan Thirawat and I work as an engineer at Infraspec. Uh, we at Infraspec are a team of engineers where we try to solve engineering problems through tech and we primarily focus on backend engineering and DevOps. So before getting started, I will cover the outline which I am going to cover today. I will start with the fundamentals of containerization and see the benefits which we get from it. Then we will move into how the containers made under the hood and what are the Linux elements that makes container networking possible. And at the end we will have a demo where we will see how containers or multiple containers running in a host machine interact with each other. So before getting started, how many of you are familiar with containers or use in your day to day life work? So most of them use containers. But to keep the context, I will start with the very basics. So just bear with me. So containerization, we can define, it is a mechanism to run our workload in isolation or in different environments and keeping certain limits on the resource uses. For example, we have our app which we need to run in isolation and this app has certain dependencies, libraries, dependency on libraries and all. So what we do is we package the application along with all its dependencies to run it in an isolated environment and that is what a container is. And what are the benefits we get from containerization is? If you look at this, we have a physical server, host operating system is running on that. We install something called hypervisor. Hypervisor basically facilitate to manage all the virtual machines and there is an app A and app B both of them we need to run in isolation and as you can see each application has a guest operating system so this was the approach we were using before the container came up so server with multiple virtual machines so what is the downside which i see here is every app needs a full operating system guest operating system but if you look here on top of host operating system we can run container engine something like docker and our app can use, interact, uh, use, run on the top of host operating system, still running in isolation with each other. So the time to set a virtual machine is much larger than working with containers. So that's the one benefit we get from it and there are many other, most of you will be familiar with it. So what are containers made up of? Do anyone has any idea what Linux technologies make up the containers? The first one is Linux namespace. Linux namespace is the Linux, uh, Linux kernel feature and that helps us in isolating the kernel resources. Like if you have two namespace, the process running in first namespace will not be able to interfere with the processes running on another namespace. So it's basically partitioning of kernel resources. There are multiple types of namespaces like user namespace, there is PID namespace and there is network namespace and many more. And today we will uh, take a detailed look into the network namespace. And the, so if you see here, in the host machine, I have processes of two application. You can consider process A, B, and C are the process of red application and another of yellow applications. So now each process can interfere with each other, but I want my both the application to run in isolation. So what I will do is, I will create two separate namespaces for them and run the process related with the red app in the red namespace and the process related with the yellow app in the yellow namespace. They both share the host operating system but they still work in isolation and that's what namespace helps in isolation, isolating process. The second we have is control groups. So we want our containers to not use more than certain specified of memory, CPU, we want to restrict that. So that's what C groups are. It's another kernel feature that help us to limit the resource uses. So if you take a look at this diagram, suppose in my system everything is 100%, I create a C group named one and I allocate certain memory, CPU, network and input output. After creation of C group one, what I will be remaining with? 
this percentage that can either system process can use it or I can create multiple C groups. So C group, so if, if you summarize it, namespaces is what you can see and control groups are what you can control. So containers are made up of namespaces and C groups. There is something of called overlay file system as well. I'm not going to deal with that. So let's move to the next topic. So these are the two mechanisms. And when we run a process in context of these two mechanisms, what we get are containers and container runtimes. For example, Docker under the hood uses this to make it easier for us to create namespaces and C groups. So yeah, so let's take a little deep look into what are network namespaces. If you see this, I have my host network namespace and I have my container network namespace. In host, I have my loopback interface, E0, routes, and IP tables. And when you take a look at the container network namespace, we have separate loopback interface, routes, and IP tables. So network namespace mainly deals in isolating the network stack of the host. So there will be different routes, different IP table rules in the container network namespace, and they will not interfere with the host network namespace. So I will quickly go to the terminal. Let me know if the font is visible, or I can make it bigger. Visible, right? Fine. So this is the command which we run to check uh, whether is there any network namespace created in our machine. So currently, there is no network namespace. So what I will do is I will create one. So the command for that is IP network namespace add. I will name it ns1. And when I run the command IP net ns again, you can see the namespace named ns1 is created. In the host machine, I will run the command IP link. You can see there is a loopback interface, and there are two other network interfaces, S3 and S8. But when I exact into the namespace and see whether these three interfaces are there or not, let's see. So what I will do is IP network namespace. Basically, to run any command in the network namespace, I need to exact into that. And what was the name of it was IP net NS exact into NS1. And I will run the same command IP link. As you can see, there is only one, one loopback interface. But if you see in the host, there are three interfaces. So we have complete different network stack in the namespace which we created than the host. And if I do IP route in the host, I have different routing rules. But if I go into the inside the namespace and I run the same command, you can see there are no routes. So I can have completely different network stack in the namespace, and which is no matter with the host namespace. What is container networking? Suppose I have host, and I have two containers here. It can be many. Container 1 needs to send some packets or some data to container 2. And container 2 cannot listen to what container 1 is saying because there is no networking set between them. So container networking basically deals with how containers can communicate with each other still running in isolation, how we establish connectivity between them. So that's what we are going to see. Before we see how that happens, there are a few Linux elements that make this networking possible. The first one is network interface. In the demo, we saw there were loopback interface, and there was E0, S3, and S8. So let's see what is it. You have your host device or your laptop. There is a public or the private network out there. Your host device needs to communicate with the network. So how we can facilitate that is we have something called network interface in our machine. It could be a physical or virtual. So network interface is the point of communication between your host device and the public and private network. That's what network interface is. And next very important we have is bridges. You have a local area network one, where you have two machines running, host one and host two. And similarly, you have there two machines, host three and host four, in local area network two. Now, this host one needs to send some packets or some data to host three or four. 
but they are parts of different network segments, how we can communicate between them. So what we do is, we will create a bridge. Uh, currently, bridges can have many ports, but I will consider bridge as two ports here. So one is each zero interface, and another is each one. So we connect them with the bridge. So if host one tries to send some data to host three or four, it will be facilitated through the bridge. So when host one sends to host four, uh, it don't know like where the host four is. So what it will do is it will broadcast to everyone, and and bridge maintains a MAC table that learns when host one send something to bridge, the bridge will create an entry saying that the host one is connected to each zero interface. And when host three responds back, then bridge will learn that host three is connected to each one interface. So next time host one wants to send to host three, it will check its table and it will see that the host three is connected to the each one interface. So it will only broadcast to LAN two. It will not broadcast to LAN one. So basically, it facilitates forwarding packets from one network segment to another. We can connect multiple network segments with the bridge. The third and very interesting we have is with virtual Ethernet devices. I have two namespaces here, NS1 and NS2. Now, I need to enable communication between them, how NS1 can send packets to NS2. So there comes with pair. So one end is with one, and another is with two. So you can visualize it as a cable that has two ends, and each end you can have a virtual network interface. So if you send packets through one end, it will be received on another end. So that's how we enable communication between two namespaces or two containers. So we create a with pair. They are always created in pairs. And we attach each end with the uh, namespaces, which we want to facilitate communication. And the fourth and the last what we have is routing tables. So this rule basically says that if any packet that comes to my machine, which is destined for 102.26.67.0, with a net mask of that, has to go through the default gateway 10.0.0.2 through the interface it's zero. So routing table contains set of rules or the entries that decide what route the packet has to take. Or something I have to send from my machine to some other destination, routing rules will say that which gateway it has to take or which interface it has to go through. So now we will have demo. So in the first, I will have a single network namespace. So I have my host machine. In the host machine, I have this interface with this IP address. And I have a container one. Uh, we, in the previous slides, we see uh, how we can connect host and the container. Would anyone like to take a guess how container one will be able to communicate with container two? Uh, hello, everyone. So basically, you need to attach a virtual Ethernet cable to a container. Then you need to add a role inside that, that uh, from any container coming from this IP address. So the default gateway IP address will be this one. And then uh, you will directly connect to this one, means EP0 as head. Yeah, perfect. So what is saying that we can create a wet pair and attach one end of the wet pair to container one and another in the host machine and add a, so he said like this, yeah. So with one is in the host machine and see it one other pair is in the container. And what he said is assign an IP address to that so we can send packets from the host machine to the container. And next, add the routes. In the host, we need to add a route saying that if any packet which is destined for 172.16.02, that should be sent via with one. So I said if you send any packet through one end, it will be accessible on the other end. So that's how host can communicate with the container one. And in the container one, there is only one network interface. So the traffic which has to go out, whether it's to host machine or to the internet, it says destination can be anywhere. Just send the traffic through C1. I hope this diagram is clear to everyone. Then I will jump back to terminal and try to do. It's clear? 
font is visible, right? Yeah. So, I pin attendance. I created this NS1. I will delete that so I can name it container1. I pin attendance delete and the name of the interface which I want to delete. So, if I run the command, yeah, nothing is there. It's clear. Yeah. So I will start from here, IP link. If you see, in the host, I have this interface ENP0S8. And if I run the command IP address, you can see the IP address 10, 0, 0, 10. And that's what I had over here. The next is, I need to create a namespace named container1. So I will do that. So IP network namespace add container 1, if you see IP net NS, yeah, container 1 is created. Now, I need to enable communication between the container and the host. So, what I will do is, if I IP net NS exec into container 1, and if I do IP link, you can see there is only a loopback interface, and the default state is down. So I need to create a wet pair first. So the command to create the wet pair is IP link add wet1 type wet and the peer name will be C1. If I run the command IP link again, you can see the two are created C1 and V1. Now I need to put C1 in, in, inside the namespace container1. So how I can do that is IP link set C1 inside the namespace container1. So if I run IP link command in the host again, you can see we only have V1. C1 is not there. So we want to check in the namespace whether it's created or not. So IP network namespace exact into the container one and I run IP link command again. You can see C eight one is in the container one. And you can see something here. Uh, IP IF four and in the C eight one if you see it's IF five. It basically says that IF four, IF five is the another end of that web cable. So now we have created wet one C1, and we have assigned C1 into the container. Now I, from the host, I need to send packets to container 1. To send anything, I need the IP address of container 1 interface, right? But I do not have the IP address. So first thing I will do is, I will add an IP address to C1. So IP net namespace exact into container 1 and IP address at 172.16.0.2. 2 and I will give a net mask of 24. So this 24 means that 17, 172.16.0 is the network part and 2, 3, whatever will be the part of that network. So I will assign an IP address to this. So, okay, so to which device I have to give, I have to assign it to C1. And if I run IP address command inside the container one, you can see this C1 interface got this IP address. And when we assign this IP address, there is a automatically, oh, okay, so there is no route created basically. If I try to ping 172.16.0.2 from the host, will, will it succeed? Why? Yeah, there is no route defined. So it says the destination net is unreachable. And if I see the route in host, sorry, I will just clear it and run once again. It's not visible. Yeah. In the host also, I have no route defined that says that if any packet that has to go to 172.16.0 network, how it should go. That's why it was saying destination is unreachable. So in the host, I will add a route first. So what I will say is, IP route add 172.16.0. I'll just keep it zero. For any 172.16.0 network, just send the traffic through with one. 
it says that device for next hop is not up that means the web one which we created the state is down we did not enable that so first we need to enable that so ip link set with one up and if i run the command again it says the lower layer is down which is the lower layer of with one with one so i need to enable that as well right so ip network namespace exact into container one and ip link set with one up yeah so now i can add the route ip route add 172.1600/24 it should go via device with one and if you see the routes now uh, we have one more route added that says if any packet which is destined for the network 172160 send it via with one i will try to ping host now a container now 172160 2 it still says that the destination host is unreachable can anyone take a guess now why it's not able to connect ha huh? ashwini can you give mic to him uh, do we have to connect va to host so when we created web1 uh, it's already connected with the host so we just needed to add a route saying that if any packet for 172.16.02 send it through web1 so it's working fine okay so what was the here is when i did ping to the container what ping basically does it will send some packets there need to someone who can respond back to our request right for every request there has to be a respond response right now question for you is in the namespace which i created container 1 there is no server running who will be sending response to me so if there is so okay basic question if there is no server running can anyone response my request ping request no okay so if there is no server running it's the kernel network stack that will send you a response but to send the response back in the container i need to have a route saying that the request come from host or anywhere what i have to use i have to use set one right so let's check whether i have that route or not so ip network namespace exact into container one and if i do up ip route there is a route that says that 172160 any packet which is destined for 172160 send it via c1 but when i send a ping request i did it from the host machine and in my host the ip address will be 10.0.0.10 this one so in the container i have no route to handle the traffic from any other network other than this so i will add a default route i will say that any packet which comes just send it default via c1 because that's the only interface which i have so ip network namespace exact into container 1 ip route add default via 172160 what was the ip 2 and it should go out through device c1 so if i check the route again yeah i have two routes for 172.16 it will use c1 and for any other route also just make use of c1 so now i will try to ping 172.16.02 you can see the ping is success all are clear till here any doubt any confusion so this is what we did in this demo we had the host machine we created one container we need to connect our container with the host so we create a web pair attach one to the container and one with the host from the host we need to send some data to container one so assigned an ip address and we saw that we were not able to ping the container because there were no route in the host but when we added route to the host the container was not able to respond back
because in container there was no route saying how to forward the traffic back so we added route in the container one and that's how they were able to communicate with each other so this was the first part of the demo in second i have a question for every one of you this we deal with container one but in real world we will have many containers right so i bring one more container two and i created with two set two container they will be able to communicate with the host and host will be able to communicate with the both the containers my question to all of you is how container one will be able to talk with container two now can anyone take a guess yeah my guess okay so basically uh, using breeze yeah because in uh, our uh, local host like uh, when we uh, there are lots of computer locally present so to connect to each other we use wifi means uh, a common network which is attached to every laptop or local host similarly we need a bridge so that under uh, which all similar all containers are connected to it nice so what is saying is we can create a bridge and to that bridge we can attach all the containers which are part of that network so he is saying to create a bridge over here and add with one with two to, to the bridge so the containers will be communicate with each other through bridge as we seen the earlier slides right how the bridge connects connects to name spaces and one simple solution could be we could create a one more simply with pair and added like this c1 and c2 is another with i can connect with the container what is the downside with this approach first before i create bridge yeah because this is limited to only two containers if you want to connect three containers four containers then what yeah so in case of two containers it's fine if i create container three container four the number of with pair which i have to create the number of routing rules which i have to add will drastically increase so let's see the solution what is said earlier we should create a bridge so okay now we have a single node multiple namespaces means multiple containers will be running in that so we checked out this it was working fine now we have a container 2 we need our container 2 to communicate with the host as well as other containers so what we will do is we will create a bridge assign it an ip address 172.16.0.1 slash 24 means the network will be 172.16.0 and the with one i will attach with bridge then i will create one more with pair and attach with the container and the bridge so in the host i can add a routing rule saying that if any traffic or any packet which are destined for 172.16.0 network send it via bridge when you send something to bridge bridge has this ability to forward so it will forward to all the containers that are connected to it the packet which is destined for the container will send the response back yeah so to send anything we need to add an ip address to container 2 as well so yeah so now we will see this in demo we have the first part with us we have this much with us now let's set up the second part yeah so i will clear this ip network namespace i have only container 1 uh, what i need to do is i need to create container 2 now so ip network namespace add container 2 if i run ip net ns you can see i have container 2 as well so now i will create a bridge first because we know that we need to connect both the containers with the bridge so there is an interesting command to create a bridge ip link add i will name my bridge br0 br0 is any problem with it or is it fine okay ip link add br0 and type should be bridge now how do i verify the bridge was created or not i will run the command ip link you can see the bridge is created the default state is down i don't know why do not by default they keep it up so yeah bridge is created uh, yeah there is one more part we need to assign an ip address to the bridge so what i will do is ip address add 172.16.0.1 same network 
to which device to device bridge which is named br0 and if i run ip address command you can see our bridge now has a ip address as well and from the host if i try to ping bridge ping 172.16.0.1 and why the ping to bridge succeed is because in the earlier demo we already created a route and that said said any traffic for this just send it via wet one but this route will seem redundant right we do not need this route we can just say any traffic for this send it via bridge so i will delete this route how to do that is ip route delete and i will just copy paste from here and stick it yeah so the route is deleted and now if i try to ping bridge 172 1601 it's still able to succeed why uh why i'm still able to ping bridge any guesses so what default route is saying any default route should go via this gateway through this interface right and when we create a bridge right it is by default created with the host interface and that's how we were able to ping bridge and ha huh? is anyone saying something no okay so i will quickly uh, attach this wet one to the bridge now if you see ip link oh where is wet one yeah here so i need to attach this wet one with the bridge so ip link set wet one master br0 wet not to it's one yeah so if i run ip link again you can see the wet one is now connected with the br0 bridge which we created so this much is done now what we we'll do is Uh, we will create one more wet pair to attach with the container 2 and the host so that name it v2 and c2 so ip link add wet2 type wet pair name will be c2 okay so typo so if you see c2 and v2 are created now we need to attach c2 with the container 2 so ip link set c2 with the network name space of container 2 and if you see ip link we only have wet1 and wet2 in the host so i need to enable wet1 and wet2 and c2 right so ip link set wet2 up ip network name space exact into container 2 ip link set c2 so if you run so in the container we have the loopback interface and c2 interface to communicate we need to assign an ip address to the c2 interface in container 2 so how how i will do is ip address add what was the ip of container 2 172 1603 1603 network 24 and device is c2 and when i added ip address to that so in container 2 there are uh, no routes yet ip link it says that the lower layer is down that means c2 is down i don't know why ip network name space exact into container 2 ip link set c2 up and if i see here yeah it says it's up so if i ping uh, container 2 from the host will it succeed now it will let's see so if i ping 172 1603 it says that the 
destination net is unreachable. And if I look at the IP route, uh, there is no route saying that it has to go through bridge. So what, what I will do is, I will first check what is the IP address of bridge. Is 172.16.01. So I will add a route to the host. IP route add 172.16.0.424 network. Just send all the traffic via BR0. It says that the device for next hope is not up. So if you see BR0 which we created, the default state is still down. I need to enable that. IP link set VR0 up. Now, if I do IP link, so the bridge is up now. We have connected VET1 with the VR0 and VET2 with the, okay, we did not connect VET2 with VR0. With so, IP link set VET2, VET2 and master will be VR0. Yeah. So, if I run IP route command. So when I enable the bridge, there was a default route that was created. And this route says that any packet which is destined for this network, send it via device bridge. So now from the host interface, I will try to ping container 2 and let's see whether the route works or not. So ping 172.16.03. It's able to connect successfully, right? So that means that in container 2, there is a default route that, that is created. Let's see whether we have a route in container 2. So IP network namespace, exact container 2. What is the command to check the routes? So from container 2, if I try to ping host, will it succeed? Uh, I did not, there is no default route in container 2. So in current case, I'm asking, if from this container 2, I ping host, will it succeed? And this is the route in container 2. OK, so we are running out of time. I will just <laughs> ping host and check. 10 point, and this is the IP address of host. It succeed. Why it succeed is because we are sending all the routes through bridge, and bridge is connected with the host. So that's how multiple containers, if your third container just attached with the bridge, just do the same thing which we did and it will work. Same case is with the multiple host. Now we have different machines, multiple containers are running. What you need to do is just, when you create multiple machines in the same network, they will be attached with a switch. So there will be network connectivity. What you need to do is add some route. Uh, I'm just skipping because we are running out of the time. And if you see, this, and if you relate with popular container runtime like Docker, what you will see, they do the similar thing which you have seen now. What is the difference is, by default, the bridge which Docker create is named Docker 0, and rest things under the hood remain same, nothing else. I will just leave, okay, in this machine, I have Docker installed. I will just run IP link command. You can see, Docker by default created a bridge named Docker 0, and when you create any container, if you run Docker run where container is Ubuntu, they will create the wet pair attached with, with this thing, and the, like the whole stuff which Docker do is just similar. So I will just skip, uh, we are just running out of time. So yeah, these are the references, I will share the PPT with you all. And thanks, any questions, any confusion in break you can catch, or you can connect with me on Twitter, I will be happy to answer your questions. So I think that. Thanks very much. That was a great talk on.